Okay, thank you, Joel. So, children, you're dismissed at this time for Junior Church. I see Miss Alexa and Mr. Dillon back there for you. So you can head on back there with them. And um, as the children are heading out this morning, let's um, look at Exodus chapter 15. Exodus chapter 15. We're going to look at um, verses 22 to 27. We're talking about gratitude, living a life of thanksgiving. Um, last week we talked about the things to, to be you know, to have more gratitude in our lives. And today we're going to work on a habit that may keep us from being grateful in our life. So Exodus chapter 15, um, 22 to 27. So this is um, after the Red Sea. It says, um, then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea and they went into the wilderness of Shur and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. When they came to Marah, they could not drink the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Therefore, it was named Marah. So the people grumbled at Moses, saying, What shall we drink? Then, they cried, then he cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, and he threw it into the waters, and the waters became sweet. So let's talk about two words today. Let's talk about habits and grumbling. Okay, so those are a couple things that we might find in our lives, um, but habits are regular tendencies and practices, okay? And so we, we know about habits, and we have so many habits in our lives. I mean, think about a habit that your spouse or a close family member has that really encourages you. Now, if you have a negative habit, you thought I was going to say annoys you, right? A habit that your spouse or close family member has that really encourages you. Think about that type of hab habits. Um, there are habits um, in our lives that we accept and love and receive as we see those habits being um, um, shown. Um, and there are habits um, that annoy us as well. So when we think of habits, we can think of the good habits and the bad habits. Um, so in preparation for this, I just started looking up and searching for habits. And boy, there was a list and list after list after list of different types of habits. And so I um, um, came across a list of habits that really affect relationships. And um, since we live a life of relationships, uh, and that's very important for us at at home, at work, with your friends, in the church, um, then I thought this list, um, and these are the negative habits, um, some of these things that, um, that we could work on um, to try to keep from making these habits in our life. So some negative effect, habits that affect our relationships, assuming the worst or judging just constantly doing that. That could be a habit. Gossiping or spreading rumors. That can be, uh, become a habit. Excessive or constant complaining. We see the example of that in scripture with the Hebrew people. Um, interrupting or talking over others. Um, that, that can become a habit in our lives. Um, being contentious. Picking fights. Always wanting to argue. Criticizing others. You might just get in the habit of doing that. Or lying. Um, maybe blaming others for something you should be responsible for, blaming others so that you can avoid being responsible. These are things that we do um, in relationships, and if we do them a lot, they can become a habit in our life. And so you can see that there are some, some bad habits that we need to avoid um, in our lives. Now, when you read through um, you know, the Exodus and the conquest of Canaan, when you read through all of that in scripture, I don't know about you, but the thing that I noticed was that the, the people, the Hebrew people had a habit of grumbling. They had a habit of complaining. It seems like that was their natural response um, whenever something happened. And so, you know, it is Thanksgiving time. We do talk about things like gratitude and Thanksgiving this time of the year. We need to do it more. Um, but um, since we talked about developing gratitude last week, I'll tell you today that if you have the habit of grumbling, you're going to have a hard time developing um, gratitude in your life. Grumbling will keep us um, from being uh, from showing gratitude. Um, and so if you want 
to live this life of thankfulness, if you want to be that person that's thanking the Lord and praising the Lord in your life, then we need to take a look at our grumbling and see if that's a habit um, in our lives because it will limit your progress. So um, last week we looked at Nehemiah and we looked at some good examples of, of what he did and, and learned some things about gratitude. Um, this week we're not going to talk about Nehemiah. We're, as you can see from the scripture I read, we've backed up um, and looking at the Hebrew people as they've come out of Egypt and are heading um, towards the promised land. And it seems like they did it grumbling all the way. Uh, something else you find in scripture as you um, as you study scripture, as you're reading scripture, you know, we start asking, OK, so how does this apply to me? How um, how do I put this into practice in my life? Now, one of the things you can do is you look for good examples. And so as you're reading scripture and you see a good example, you say, well, there it is. There's a good example. I need to start trying to have that as part of my character, as, as part of who I am. I need to follow that good example. So that's one thing that you do as you go through scripture. Another thing that you can do when you don't see the good example, um, when you see the bad example, is you can say, well, I don't want to follow that example, but I need to learn from it. I need to see their negative example and learn from that so I can develop the, the good character that God wants me to have. And so we replace um, that habit of grumbling. We can see that here in scripture, um, need to replace that habit of grumbling with a habit of thanksgiving and praise to God. And so we can, we can work on better habits um, in our lives. So let's talk about that today. Let's talk about avoiding the habit of grumbling. The first thing you need to do is remember the work of God. You need to remember that God's at work in your life and you need to look back and, you, and see the work of God, God's involvement in your life and that starts changing our perspective on things. So just think about it. What has God done for you in your life? Now, again, as from the reading, as we saw from the very beginning of it, it mentions that um, they had crossed the Red Sea. This is after the crossing of the Red Sea. Um, and so if you just back up a little bit, they saw the work of God. And it happened even before then. So well, well before then, after God had sent Moses to Egypt and Moses was talking to Pharaoh, you know, the first things that start happening are the 10 plagues. And this goes on for a, a period of time. And so God's people are witnessing this. They are seeing the work of God. They see these 10 plagues and some of them, they see that they're even delivered. They don't even experience some of these bad things uh, that are happening over the land of Egypt. Of Egypt. And so then, so they're able to see the, their deliverance with the Passover. They didn't experience that 10th plague of the death of the firstborn. So they see God at work. They see his grace. They see his deliverance in their life. So if they look back, you know, just a little ways, they could see the work of God. They could see all these powerful things that God is doing. And so then there's the Exodus. They leave. Um, they're leaving Egypt. And after they're, after they're leaving their captivity, they go a little ways and they come to another barrier. They see the Red Sea. It's right there in front of them. And, you know, obviously the way they were complaining, it looked like a hopeless situation. And so they didn't cry out to God. They didn't say, okay, God, let's see what you're going to do next. They started grumbling. Why'd you bring us out here to die? Um, and, and, you know, we know in that situation that only God could deliver them. And he did deliver them. They saw the work of God. The sea opened up. And, you know, we read that so many times, we don't even think about the significance of that. But next time you're at the bay, just think about that. Think about the waters just spreading and opening up. What a powerful force it would take to do something like that. And, you know, so we just read it in the Bible. says, oh, yeah, the sea opened up. You know, uh, but let's let's recognize this is a powerful work of God. And he he opens up the sea and then they saw it come back down on the Egyptian army and how the army was destroyed in in this process. And they responded correctly after that, led by Moses and Miriam. But they praised the Lord. They were led into praise. The Lord is my strength and song He has become my salvation this is my God and I will praise him, my father's God and I will extol him. The Lord shall reign 
forever and ever. And so, led by Moses and Miriam, they were praising God after they saw all these things happen. But then they leave that place, and they're traveling. They get thirsty. The water's bad. And so, instead of saying, hey, let's... Let's praise the Lord and offer, offer God our praise and trust in God in this situation. Let's, let's look to the Lord. They just went back and did what they were doing before. They continued to grumble. So the water was bitter and they grumbled bitterly. But we can learn from this bad example, right? This, I mean, this is a bad example and we can learn from this. Uh, we need to, in our lives... Remember the work of God. We need to remember what God is doing in our lives. And when we come face to face with a difficult time, all we need to do, our first response is to look back and say, God's been working in my life. You know, I can trust him. I'm going to trust him because he's working in my life and, and he's faithful. I'm going to look for him to work in my life in the future. So what has God been doing in your life? That's what we have to look at. What has God been doing in your life? And again, it's important to remember these works of God. Maybe it's an answer prayer that, that you prayed for something and you had a very clear, definite answer to that prayer and you saw the work of God in that answer. Maybe it was a bad circumstances bad circumstance and you saw it turn out into a good situation afterwards. Maybe you, you saw that in your life. Well, we need to remember that because God was involved with that, with that. Maybe it was a miracle. You prayed for something miraculous and you saw a miracle of God. We need to remember that because that's a work of God in our lives. Maybe you didn't get the miracle you wanted, but you saw God with you. You recognize his presence and help um, to get through that difficult situation and you know that he didn't leave you. And so that will help you through those tough times and into the next tough time that you get to. You see, God's at work in our lives. We just have to remember that. We have to look back and, and note those times in our life and say, yes, he's with me. He's helping me. He's, he's bringing deliverance in my life. He's saved me. He's done all these things for me. And when we do that, then we're able to go move from this idea of grumbling about the next thing that happens to trusting in the Lord about the next thing that happens. So how do I avoid the habit of grumbling? Well, something else I need to do is remember the promise of God. And we talked about this last week. God has made promises to us, and we can trust God in his promises. God promised the people, the Hebrew people, he promised them. I'm going to take you to the promised land. I'm going to take you to Canaan. That's, that's what I promised to do. So think about it. Anything that gets in the way of that result, they have to, if they were thinking about it clearly, they would say, okay, this is the promise. He's promised us this. Well, we've got a little problem right here. Does that mean his promises are failing? Does that mean I can't trust his promises? Or am I going to trust his promise that he will get us through that difficult time. You see, the people cried out to God in their captivity. They cried out to him, and God answered their prayer and sent Moses back to Egypt. Moses and Aaron spoke to the Pharaoh, and things got worse, right? They got worse. It was more difficult as a result of that. And guess what the people did? They grumbled. They grumbled because now things are getting worse. The one that God had sent to, to help deliver them, they're complaining to him because all of a sudden their, their life is getting worse and not better. And so then with all of this grumbling that's going on, God gave Moses the very clear message to give to the people. Say therefore to the sons of Israel, God says, I am the Lord and I will bring you up out from the burdens of the Egyptians and I will deliver you from their bondage. I will also redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. Then I will take you for my people and I will be your God and you shall know that I am the Lord your God who brought you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will bring you to the land which I swore to to give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and I will give it to you for a possession. I am the Lord. God made a promise. 
So whenever things got difficult, whenever it looked like they were getting off the, the path of getting to the fulfillment of that promise, that's where they had to say, I'm going to believe the promise of God. But they didn't say, I'm going to believe the promise of God. They grumbled. And so in our lives, we have to recognize that we have received the promises of God. And as we, as we go through life, and when we hit those difficult times, we have to say the same thing. I believe the promises of God. And if we'll believe those promises of God, then we will walk in faith. We'll trust him. We'll, we'll thank him for what he's doing in our lives. But if we don't remember those promises, we're probably going to grumble just like the, the Israelites did. So, you know, as we look at that, they could have responded with um, gratitude instead of grumbling if they would have learned the lesson. They could have done that, but they didn't. They could have called out to God in each one of those places, Lord, you know, this is looking bad, but you've promised us. We've seen your work. They could have called out to God, but they didn't. They just grumbled, and Moses is the one who had to call out to God. That was their habit. We need to avoid that habit um, in our lives. And again, we have to ask that question. What has God promised you? What has he promised me? And as I mentioned, we looked at some of that last week. We saw that in Christ, we've been promised the Holy Spirit. So that's a promise of God. In Christ, we've been promised peace. Even when there's trouble in this world around us, we've been promised that peace. And I was just, I was reading Ephesians 1 this week, and I thought that I mean, that's a combination of the promises of God and thanksgiving and gratitude towards God. Uh, and Paul says in Ephesians 1, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. He spends that whole chapter talking about these great blessings that we have in Christ, and he's blessing the Lord because of these blessings. They, they include that we're chosen by God, includes our redemption in Christ, our forgiveness through grace, our inheritance, our hope. He talks about all of those things, these promises of God for us in Jesus Christ. So if you're having a grumpy or grumbling day, Read Ephesians chapter 1. See the blessings of God in your life and, and allow that to change your attitude and your, and your habits to praise God instead of grumble against him. Remember God's work. He's worked in your life. He's done things. Remember those things. Remember his promises. He's made promises to us, and we know that he keeps those promises, and so we need to stand firm in them so that we can change our response to, from grumbling to gratitude. So how do you avoid this habit of grumbling? Well, one more thing. Remember the response that God desires. What's he want from us? How does he want us to respond? We saw what the Hebrew people did. We've looked at our lives a little bit. How does God want us to respond, respond to him? Well, we you know, asked, asked the question, how did he want the Hebrew people to respond to him? He wanted them to respond in faith, right? He wanted them to trust him in every one of those places. He wanted them to say, I don't know what's going on, but I trust God, right? I trust God in this place. Um, at every turn, he showed the power, he proved he was faithful to them, and he wanted them to respond through obedience and trust. That's what God wanted the Hebrew people to do. But again, instead, they grumbled. They complained. That was their habit. Avoid that habit. Avoid that habit of grumbling. The response that God desires from us is faith and gratitude, right? Right? That's what God wants from us. He wants us to trust him, respond in faith, and he wants us to thank him and, and bless his name. By faith, we trust the Lord with our life. We are grateful for the blessings that we have in life. By faith, we do not live in fear. We don't live in anxiety. In fact, in Philippians chapter 4, when Paul talks about that, he says, don't be anxious, but in prayer, with thanksgiving right? In prayer, with thanksgiving, bring your request to God. And then you're going to have that peace. 
that passes all understanding. This is the promise of God. This is the, these are the steps of, of response that he wants from us, that we would come to him not being anxious, but call out to him with prayer and thanksgiving, bringing our request to him, and then we'll experience that peace. Trust and gratitude. That's what God wants from us. Um, that's the, that's the, that's the uh, example for us to, so that we can avoid grumbling. You know, as I mentioned, this example of, um, in Scripture is a bad example. Their, their, you know, their response was to grumble instead of to trust. But there are good examples in Scripture. We saw, again, last week we saw um, with Nehemiah, he had a good response to God. He, he called out to God. He trusted in the Lord. And we're going to see um, next week, later on in the book of Nehemiah, um, the thanksgiving for, for the completion of the things that God um, told Nehemiah to do. Uh, so we, we saw that example. Uh, a few weeks ago, we looked a little bit at Samuel's life, and part of that, that look into his life, we reminded ourselves of Hannah, his mom, and the things that she was going through. Um, and, and we recognize, as you read for Samuel, she was a young lady overwhelmed. She was overwhelmed because of, she could not have a child, and she wanted a child, and so overwhelmed that she was praying about this, and even made that vow that we read in Scripture, Lord, if you grant my petition, I will dedicate my son to the Lord's service in the tabernacle. You give me a son, I'll give him back to you, um, dedicated to you. And the Lord heard her prayer. She did become pregnant. We don't see that she grumbled about her vow. Um, in, in her faith, she brought her son to Eli the priest and dedicated him to the Lord. And that's, that's how Samuel got, got involved in all the great things that God had for, for him. So in her circumstances, when you read about Hannah, and it was a very difficult time for her, she didn't grumble. Yes, she was overwhelmed. She called out to God. She called out to God. And then she saw the blessings of God, and, re and she responded obediently to the Lord. We don't have to build the habit of grumbling. That doesn't have to be our habit. We can build the habit of gratitude, of, of, uh, of being thankful in situations, to, for that to be our first response instead of the response of grumbling. Remember this, what you do creates who you become. And so what we have to do is change that practice, uh, change those habits. Now, some Christians have the habit of responding to a good situation or a good outcome by saying something like, um, well, I was lucky or that was lucky. And sometimes, if, it, if the opportunity is there, I'll say, you weren't lucky, you were blessed, right? You were blessed. It's how we look at it. What's our habit? What's our, what's our habitual response to things in life um, and we need to do those little things in life to develop those habits in our life that are 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 moving us towards thanking God and trusting God and showing gratitude um, to to have this mindset of thanksgiving in our lives even those little things that we say in response to life events so examine your habits this week especially your response to negative situations. When something difficult comes before you, do you habitually think, I knew this would happen, or I was afraid this would happen? Do you, you know, when trouble comes, is your, is your habit to respond in the negative, or is your habit to respond in faith and trust in the Lord, blessing his name? Gratitude or grumbling? We have to make that choice. What's, the, what's our habit going to be? And so, as we think about moving away from grumbling and start developing this idea of gratitude, remember God's work in your life. Remember God's promises to you and remember how God wants you to respond in those situations. Let's create those good habits that honor God. Let's pray.
Heavenly Father, I do um, ask that you would help us today to take a look at these scriptures and these thoughts and, and learn from bad examples and, uh, and, and be prepared to uh, make good habits in our lives. I pray, Father, that, that we would uh, trust you and that we would be grateful to you for, for all the things that you do in our life, that we would trust you and be grateful because we know you've been involved with, in our life and will continue to and that you've promised things to us and you're faithful to those promises. Help us respond the way that honors you. In Jesus' name, amen. So as we have our invitation song this morning, if there's a decision you need to make for Christ, we want to give you that opportunity. Let's stand together as we sing.